laptop wouldn't work, so or maybe it's half, so it won't work on Windows anymore. Used to. Whatever it is, I've not had enough of it. No way to know whether it's because I don't know if it's laptop. Why it used to work and doesn't now, I don't know. If you don't have to do anything on my phone, it might not do it anymore. Might go back to StreamYard and Haps can go away. That's all I care. Haps used to work just fine on my laptop. I'm using the Windows operating system and now it doesn't. Why well, it's always a struggle to get on that way now. The last couple of weeks. Oh, here I am on my phone again. Hey, welcome to whoever just came on. If you got a prayer request, go ahead and type it in the chat and I'll pray for you. Welcome. Hey, blessings, Carlinda. Right, good, then I got somebody on here who can agree with me in prayer and go through the prayer list. Hey, blessings, Shana. You write this in here before I forget it. All right. Now I'm ready to think. Yeah. Here you go to the Raider prayer list. That way I'll be able to edit this just a minute. Nah, they don't even like that. All right. So if everybody agrees with me in prayer. Father God, we come to you on behalf of KCJ, and thank you for all the healing that's manifested so far. And Father, I just command her stiffness, numbness, and tingling in her hands and arms and wrists to leave now in the name of Jesus. I command her kidneys to be fully restored. I command her respiratory system to be completely healed now in the name of Jesus. All inflammation, swelling, and allergic reaction. Leave her now in the name of Jesus. And Father, we come to you on behalf of Rick and we just ask you to grant him financial breakthrough. And as you help him to get into that apartment sooner rather than later. And Father, we thank you that you allowed that you got Jamal home safely. In his long journey. And Father, we just give Jesus all the glory, the praise, and the honor for the healing of Mary's lungs. And I speak to Miss Jean's lungs and command them to be healed. And thank, you, thank you, Father, for protecting John Hill and his family. That you continue to heal the family. 
grant them hearts of forgiveness, with mercy and grace, one for the other, and most of all, love towards each other. Father, we just ask that you would strengthen Cassie each day as she goes into her job as nurse so that she's not overwhelmed. And Father, we come to you on behalf of Martha. And Father, we thank you that you give her inspiration, clarity, guidance, and direction. That you give her energy. That her respiratory system is fully healed. That her immune system would not overreact to pollens and allergens in the air. And we speak to Robert's Robert's body and we command every cancer cell in his body to die now in the name of Jesus. All the cancer must go. And Father, we come to you on behalf of Pam. Command her lungs to be fully restored. And all the pain and the incisions from that surgery to leave now. Every last bit of that pain must go. And Father, we come to you on behalf of Luana, and we command her lungs to be restored. And command the numbness in her fingers and hands to leave now in the name of Jesus. Command the tightness in her wrists and arms to be loosed. And command her memory and her mother's memory to be restored so she no longer has any memory loss. And Father, we just continue to ask that you grant Norm a favor at her job. And Father, once again, we come to you on behalf of Omar's fiance. Command that celiac disease to leave her now in the name of Jesus. And Father God, we just ask that you open the lines of communication. Whether it's face-to-face, -face, telephone, text message, email, Pony Express, or Carrier Pigeon, Father. Just open those lines of communication, please. And Father God, we just ask that you would. Give her a heart of forgiveness. And we bind the spirit of bitterness and command it to leave her now in the name of Jesus. And we command all the pain in Omar's back and neck to leave him now in the name of Jesus. Father God, we just ask that you grant him financial breakthrough, that you give him provision to pay all his bills on time. Father God, that you would Help him to find employment sooner rather than later. And all the spirit, oh, give him strength, happiness, joy, gladness. Cast out all the negativity and the downtroddenness and heaviness and sadness and depression and all that negative garbage. Just get that out. We speak to David Miller's knee and command it to he be healed now. Speak to Pastor Dave's body and command that infection leave him now in the name of Jesus. Father, we come to you on behalf of Isaac and we command his liver and gallbladder to be fully healed, his lungs to be completely restored, and all the infection to leave his body now in the name of Jesus. And Father, we just ask that you just help Mary find the right construction workers to renovate her house and her ministry building. Come to you on behalf of EGA's daughter Madison. Father, we just ask you to continue to give her protection. Grant her reconciliation with her family. Give her a heart of forgiveness. Father, that you'd open the lines of communication between her and her family. So you'd grant her wisdom and discernment. And Father, we ask that you would help EGA to lose the weight. And for Shana, Father, we just, I command her sinuses and throat to be completely healed. Command all the pain in her shoulder, feet, and stomach to leave her now in the name of Jesus. And Father God, we just ask that you grant her peace and rest. Put a hedge of protection around her and keep all the tormenting spirits away. Give her peace in her mind. Grant her rest and refreshing. Give her clarity and guidance. And 
Father, we just give Jesus all the glory for the healing of Clarence, that the cancer is all gone, and he is fully healed. And Father, we come to you on behalf of Herbert. I command his kidneys to be fully restored, to be healed now in the name of Jesus. And Father, we come to you on behalf of Carlinda. Father, we just ask that you send your angels with her when she does the ministry on the streets of Atlanta. That you guide her thoughts and her steps. Bring her back from every mission trip on the streets of Atlanta safely, without harm. And Father, we come to you on behalf of Anna. I command her lymphatic system to be fully healed, completely restored sound and perfect the way Jesus designed it. I command her liver, pancreas, and intestines to be completely restored, completely repaired, and completely healed. I command the tumors in her chest to be dissolved. And Father, we command her lungs and kidneys to function perfectly the way Jesus designed them. And we come to you on behalf of Brenda. I command the cancer in her body to die now in the name of Jesus. I command her bone marrow to be restored, renewed, and brought back to health. And Father, we come to you on behalf of Sue. I command her lungs to be fully restored and fully healed. And the same for McLean. And for Justin, I command that sciatic nerve to be completely restored, completely healed. All the swelling and inflammation and pain must leave now in the name of Jesus. And Father, we come to you on behalf of Yvette. And Father, we just ask that you give her help, strength, energy, focus, clarity, and patience with people. Father, Help her to take care of her responsibilities properly and love. Lessen the shock of losing her mother. Give her peace in her mind, heart, spirit, and emotions. And Father, we come to you on behalf of Stephen. And Father, we just ask you to grant him favor in finding employment. We ask that you grant Eliza favor in getting her passport. And Father, we come to you on behalf of Shana's dad. Command his health to be restored. And Father, we ask that you draw him to Jesus for salvation. Father, we come to you on behalf of Shane's Aunt Desiree. And Father, we also just ask that you grant her restoration of her relationships, deliverance, financial breakthrough. I command her body be healed now in the name of Jesus. Father, for Shana's son Christopher, I command his feet and ankles to be healed now in the name of Jesus, to be made strong and perfect. And Father, we come to you on behalf of Anthony. Father, we just ask that you guide him and inspire him that he could see his purpose in Christ. That he could receive your guidance in the way that he should go. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, hey, Omar and Lorenzo and Emmanuel. Welcome, everybody. Everybody snuck in while I was praying. <laughs> hey, blessings, Alexis. How far up above? Oh, you got soccer. Hooray. Yeah, thank God for COVID being negative. Oh, pray for your son. 
why don't I just add that to the nightly list for your son. All right, we'll pray for your son first, and then we'll pray for you in regards to that stalker. Father God, we come to you on behalf of Carlinda's son. And Father, we just ask that you convict him when he does wrong. Give him peace when he does right. Father, that you would guide him in the way that he should go. Lord, we just ask that you turn his heart to a path of righteousness, steer him away from wickedness. And Father God, we just ask that you prevent him from finding pleasure in doing wrong, that it would no longer please or satisfy him, but rather he would discover that he gets the most pleasure when he does what's right. And Father, we just ask while he's on this journey of discovery that you protect him and help him to get it right. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Now, Father, we come to you on behalf of Carlinda. And Father, we just ask that you would protect her from this stalker, this online stalker that's been troubling her on Clubhouse. And Father, we just ask that you would block his efforts to locate Carlinda, to gather information on Carlinda, that all his efforts in that area would be foiled and come to nothing. And that you would even turn his interest away from her for her own protection. Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Well, has anybody got a prayer request? They yeah. are. Let's start scrolling again, see if I can find the Well, Emmanuel, that's a step in the right direction. At least the lines of communication are getting opened up. All right, you think you might be getting a cold. Well, we can pray about that too. And so, Father God, we come to you on behalf of Carlinda. Life and health to her body. And every virus and bacteria that may be trying to attack her body to leave now in the name of Jesus. And her immune system to be strong and ready. Just curse every virus that may attack her body. Every weapon formed against her shall come to nothing, it shall not prosper. 
but instead Carlinda and her health will prosper. By the blood of Jesus. Amen. Well, you're welcome, Shana. Yeah, that's good news. You don't have COVID. Well, you're welcome, Emmanuel. But remember, Jesus is the one doing the work. He's the one that makes it happen. Well, you got a job interview tomorrow. That's a good deal. All right, well, let's pray for Omar to get this job. Well, I got to become you on behalf of Omar. And Father God, we just ask that you grant him favor in the eyes of whoever gives him this job interview tomorrow. And he'd make a favorable impression. Then, Father God, we give you on behalf of Emmanuel. Father, we know that the crown of thorns that Jesus wore on that cross covers the mind, healing of the mind. Both physically and mentally. Declare that that healing that Jesus already paid for is being applied to EGA now. Mind, soul, and emotions will be completely healed. Jesus. Amen. Oh, thank you, Lorenzo. Appreciate that award. Right, well, if we got any more prayer requests, go ahead and get those typed in. Prayer request at all. Well, looks like oh, yeah, Lorenzo, you got that. Get on there. What user? Yeah, I know it's never happened to me, so I don't know, but I would imagine. It sounds like it'd be creepy. So we already prayed for him to fail in his attempts to track you down. So. What do you do with a person like that? No, it's not funny. Start out annoying and go downhill from there. Sure. Let's all join together 
pray for Emmanuel's wife, Laura. He said, Father God, we come to you on behalf of Emmanuel's wife, Laura. And Father, we just ask that you would strengthen her so she can bear up under the strains and pressures of this challenging time. Father God, we just ask that you give her peace and refreshing in the midst of these trials, challenges. Ask that you grant restoration of her family. They would have grace for one another, mercy towards one another, forgiveness towards one another, and most importantly, love towards one another. In Jesus' name, amen. Yeah, you should have the invitation, Lorenzo. I already sent it. You got me? Yep, you're here. I see you. Okay, I see you too. Yep, you're here. I see you. Okay, I see you too. Yep, you're here. I see you. Okay, I see you too. Yep, you're here. I see you. Okay, I see you too. Yep, you're here. I see you. Okay, I see you too. Okay. Can you hear me now? The echo's gone. Yep, the echo's gone. Sounds a lot better. Okay. I, I, I forget, I, I'm, I'm, I'm on the phone, but I'm on the laptop. So I had okay. to turn off the laptop so that he wouldn't do that. Okay, now, I, I would read the King James Version at 16 11, but in order for it, me to make it more clear, I looked it up. And it is one of the ones that you said, but there's more to it because if you're only using you're only using the 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 the, the one scripture, you have to then you just cutting off the rest of it, okay? Because first of all, uh, they're all stating that we are now ambassadors of Christ, okay? Mm -hmm. Corinthians uh, and all of them are stating, but the reason they're stating that is because. Peter put set those rules because God told him to set those rules. So Peter set the, those rules that nobody was going to be an apostle anymore except except the 12 apostles. Excuse me. I, I, dropped the, I dropped the paper. Okay. On, 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 on the book of Acts, chapter 1, uh, when Ma Matthias was was uh um was going to be the one to replace replace um Judas Augustus okay so in they had to go between Matthias and Barabbas so they threw lots now these people Matthias got won the lottery okay mm -hmm. That's what it was. They 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 they, they threw the lot. Okay, whoever gets the the small the smallest one wins. Okay, well, something like that. So I'm trying to explain to you in common uh, words so that so that we have a better understanding for us and the viewers. And uh, and the thing about it is that after they threw lots, they they got Matthias to go ahead and be be the next. To replace Judas, the being the thirteen, the thirteen uh, um, disciples, okay. But God did not show him. Jesus did not show him. Then later he went, and Jesus himself came, and God, God, a uh, uh, song, and and knocked him off his horse. And he became now known as Paul. Okay, so he is the number fourteen. Paul is the fourteenth, but he 
is he is the one to to replace Judas of Gospel. The other ones were not named by God. They were named by men, which was Peter and the apostles. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and try to read this thing right here where so you can see. Okay. And he's talking about okay, where am I? Uh Mm-hmm. Okay, so so here, here he is saying he said then the apostle returned. I'm reading on on, on Book of Acts one twelve. Okay, mm -hmm. and, and that's what I'm reading. I'll show you the. I'm reading it from the big letters because it's easier for me to read. Okay, now it says here, he says. Is that the apostle returned to Jerusalem from the hill called Mount of Olives? Okay, all right. And, and then he said, then he said, called the Mount of Olives, a Sabbath day's walk from, from the city. Then they arrived and went upstairs into the room. Okay, so now they were, they were trying to, to get to, to, to put, uh, uh, somebody in, in his place, okay? So Peter said, okay, uh, let me see where, where am I reading that? Okay. Um, okay, let me see. Uh, I, I, love my, I love my place here. Because what Peter is saying is that it has to be somebody that that uh that was around when Jesus was walked. Those are the ones that we call apostles. Okay. So so now okay, so what he's saying here is that is that and then he said that this to be an apostle or those who walked with Jesus and knew Jesus from from the beginning to the end. In other words, when he was baptized by John the Baptist, all the way to the resurrection, these people were the ones that were going to be named apostles. Now, in the Old Testament and the New Testament, it talks about that the discipleship and how the how the um how not the apostles, but he's talking about uh, the the uh, the ambassadors that they are going to do all the following things. So when Jesus says, "Okay," oh, uh, I'm trying to I'm reading of the Bible. That's what I'm trying to say. What I read. Okay, so so what he's saying here is that now if you go to to. Uh, if you go to 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 the book of Acts 1, 20 to 21, actually, it starts before that. It's actually, okay, and it's, talk, it's talking about that, okay, because they wanted to choose somebody. So now let me see. Uh, I'm going to go to Acts 20 to 21, okay. Okay. Okay, Acts 20. Okay, 20, 21 says here, it says, I'm reading it off the Bible. It says, therefore, it is necessary to choose one of the men who have been with us the whole time, that time the Lord Jesus was alive among us. Okay, so this right here, in other words, this is, you may take this, his place of leadership. All this was in the Old Testament, okay? So so it's just like it's just like saying that Peter put the foundation there of what an apostle is. Okay, so now I'm gonna go to 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 Second Corinthians and Second Corinthians five, seven three to twenty. 
Okay, so I'm going to go to Second Corinthians. Okay, let me let me get it up here. Second Corinthians. Okay. Um five. Okay. Ah, there you go. Now, Second Corinthians five, it goes through uh it goes through uh seventeen seventeen through through twenty. And, and okay, so let's see here, it says here, it says here that uh seventy here. Therefore it is to Christ the new creation has come. The old one has gone. I, I am right, right. Okay, 17. Okay, therefore, uh, the the new creation has gone, the all the uh, has come, the old one has gone. The new the news here is all all this is from God, who reconciles us unto Him. Okay, in the given us the ministry of reconciliation, that God has created reconciliating the world to Himself. God is reconciling the world to himself in Christ Jesus. Uh, people sin against them and have committed. Okay, oh man, I'm way off on that one. Second Corinthians, yeah. 517 to 20. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. I don't know how I ended up with that one. But anyway, let's go to uh let let's go to uh, uh the other one here because all these are here is talking about okay about about the ambassador okay so number twenty says therefore we are therefore Christ Christ ambassadors as through God who makes to making his appeal through them. So who is he making it through? The ambassadors. Who are the ambassadors? The born again Christian. That's what he's talking about. The new creation is gone. The, 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 the old creation is gone. The new one is in. So now we are what? Conciliated through what? Ambassadors. So when people say I'm, a, I'm an apostle, no, we're supposed to follow the apostleship, but we are now. Now, what they do is they go to the place where he says, is that did heaven I make you some apostles and preachers and evangelists? See, that he's talking to them directly, right? But after that, after he's gone, no more apostles. Okay, so the last one is going to be in Ephesians 6. Okay. And, and and the reason why I'm doing it because I remember this stuff in memory, but I want to use the the I want to use the Bible so you know where I'm getting it from. Can, can you get it featured six on your? Yeah. On your, uh, can you pull it up? Which translation do you want? Uh well, I, I'm right now. I'm using the 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 NIV, but that's because because I I, I should I should I should let me let me use the sixteen. Right? No, that's all right. Let's stick with this one. I said, I'm, I'm right here with Timothy trying to find information. Hebrews right here. Peter. Hebrews. James. Come on. Okay, come on, come on. Real revelation. I'm too far back. This one. And then this page is this page is so thin on this Bible that I'm having trouble. Here's John. So which verses did you want in Ephesians six? Oh, Ephesians it's a Ephesians Ephesians six. Two. Verse two. Yes. 
to honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise. No. Why why is it all? What's wrong? It, it happens to me all the time. I can call them and call them, but then Hmm. Okay. Man, I read them today and it, it was a perfect it was a perfect reading. Now it's just like hmm. Ah, maybe I got it backwards. I do that sometimes. So you think it might be Ephesians 2, verse 6? That's what I'm looking for. It says, and God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in heavenly realms in Christ Jesus. No. See what I'm saying is, I read them on the 1511, and, and this is not even close to it. But the what I read while ago, is, is, that's the point where we start being, we start being, uh, um, uh, there's no more there's no more uh uh apostles we are now ambassadors the ambassadors because i had a whole line of them lined up in in, the, in my study bible and he shows me all the places where he talks in the old testament and the new testament where he says that they nobody can take his place talking about jesus this is this is the, in the book of acts Okay, and nobody then he's talking about about Peter saying that now is the same thing because when I read it, I read the, the sixteen eleven because I get sins out of it. I should have stuck to the sixteen eleven, I would have gotten everything right. <laughs> but the thing about it is that or oh, the reason that I'm looking that way is because I'm looking at you in the computer. So anyway, the the, the thing about it is that is that we have to, there's a lot of misconceptions because everybody says that that Judas uh, hanged himself. Where does he say that Judas hanged himself? It doesn't. But what it does say, what it does say in the book of Acts is that Peter, with the money that was given to him now, wait a minute, see, in, and this is why I get a little confused because I had to study more into it because he don't know me. He said that that uh, the guy came and bought, got, took the money, and and uh, and and, uh, and 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 bought the plot where Jesus was going to be buried. Okay, the tomb. But on on the book of Acts, he said that because. Peter, I guess, was, I mean, uh, Judah was getting money, right? So he got rewarded for selling, for selling, uh, 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 betraying Jesus. He says there that Peter went and he went into, into his, into the, into the place that he bought. He bought some land. And when he got there, he said that he exploded and his guts came out. Really, it does say that. It is in the yeah. book of Acts. I read it today. And I go, huh, wait a minute. So what happened to, what is this? Is he talking about the same $40 or is he talking about some other money? Because the 40 coins were, or was it 30 coins? How many coins was it that they gave him so that he can betray Jesus? But he said there that he that 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 it says that that 
the guy from the from close by came and bought it and 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 uh and, and he bought the, the the hill where Jesus was gonna be buried because nobody was there. You see? And this is where I'm a little confused. So I might have study into that. But I know one thing is what the Bible is talking about is that there no no more such things as apostles. We can be apostolic because we are disciples being under the influence of apostleship or or shall we say discipleship and being mm-hmm. apostolic is one thing, but being an apostle, there's no more. See? There's no so more apostles the, the good. Uh-huh, go ahead. So I just wondered, so if the apostles are gone, are the prophets gone too? Oh no, we are the prophets. To prophesy now is to speak the word of God. When you're praying, when you're reading the Bible, you are prophesying. Like me, I have visions and dreams. I have visions and dreams, and I tell people, this is what is going to happen. Okay? Why? Because I'm prophesying what God showed me. You see? Now, I'm not. I'm, this, is, this is to give God all the glory. But one day, I was, I, I was at a bus stop, and all of a sudden, I saw this girl with two kids, a couple of kids there, on, on the other side of the street, okay? And so I walked over there because I was, and, and I walked over there when I looked at her and God said to tell her. And so I crossed the street and I said, I said, look, God said that you have to, you have to take care of your children now, that you have to, you have to find a job and try to educate yourself and do the best thing that you can for these children because your husband is not going to do it no more. And she looked at me and she says, I did you know that my husband just went to prison for a long time. I said, ma'am, I don't know. I, I said, but I just know what God told me. I turned around and I walked away. Never seen that woman before, a young lady, never seen her again. And that, my friend, was about 15 years ago. So I have been given that to prophesy because God tells us when God tells us something, but a lot of it, my visions and dreams, I keep to myself. Okay? Because God shows me stuff that I know that are going to happen. And I tell people, if you, if you guys ever looked at my scopes and look at what I'm saying, then you'll realize that it's not coming from me. Because I don't, I don't, I God, I give God the glory because I don't study to see what I want to read or nothing. I sit there and I ask God to give me directions and, and I'm thinking, okay, today I want to do uh, on Genesis and God says, no, go here. And he, what? he goes, open the book of this, open that book. And I open it up and I read this. As soon as I started reading it, it boom, it pops out on me. It pops out on me. Then I get, then, 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 then I, I start reading it in front of the people. And and once I read it, then I give you the interpretation of what he's talking about. Now, do I get that because I'm more knowledgeable? No. I get that because the Holy Spirit just utters me to watch water. And this is what I'm talking about because it, it, it just the question that I ask is because I see things that God told me things that I, he doesn't show other people because my ministry is not the same as your ministry. I don't put down nobody's ministry because everybody has a part of a ministry is part of the wisdom of God. So what you do, what you say is between you and God. What I do and what I say is between me and God. And that's the way I see everybody else, Austin, uh, uh, Austin, everybody says, Austin always, always talking about, he's always talking about, about, uh, uh, you know, getting financially rich and prosperity. But that's his job. His job is to let us go know that we can prosper if we have the faith in God. That's his job. If you listen, if you really listen to what he's saying, he's saying, 
God showed me this. God showed me that. God said, we, this can be done. That can be done. The utmost other limits that we above that we can think that we can have, we can have it because in the name of Jesus Christ. See, and that's the same thing. Okay, can everybody be rich? Yes, but can everybody be rich? No, why? Because we are blessed accordingly to our faith. And then our faith gets us into heaven. But our job is to make other believers as ambassadors of Christ. So as being an ambassador of Christ, now we are still in the same position as a disciple. But we are not called disciples, but we are called uh, uh, ambassadors. Because we have to carry the cross. And where do we carry the cross? Here. In, uh, in the renewing of our heart. When he talks about the heart, he talks about this, not this. This heart, the heart is a carnal heart. That one goes out anytime, you know, if you don't take care of yourself. But this heart, the heart of the matter is the mind, where the brain is, but on top of that is the mind. The mind then speaks to the soul. The soul then communicate with the spirit, the spirit communicate with, with the spirit of God. So then when we're praying right here, we we throw out a radiation that goes to the other ends of the universe. Ah. So this is why what I talk about when I speak in my in my in my broadcast is what God tells me to say. See, I wasn't planning on saying all this. I was just all I wanted to do was show you that in Acts 1, 20 to 21, it, it says that. See, but when they were they chose, they chose, they chose between Barnabas and 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 and, and they, they wanted him, but Matthias won. So that was of men, not of God. See, when God picks you, God picks you. I can sit here and say, Okay, I'm going to pray for you to have the, the healing spirit. But if you do not receive it, if God did not call you for that, you will never obtain it. Mm -hmm. People are that. We have, to yeah. be, we have to be connected with the vine. Yep, Jesus is the head. Yeah. It's like it's like I, I can teach I can talk about a lot of things. People say, "Give me proof of the of the resurrection." Well, when was the first resurrection? Has a resurrection happened already? Yes. Who is the Lord of the resurrection? Jesus. Who made everything in the beginning? Jesus. Jesus is the right hand of, of God. Why? Because Jesus is the strength of God, and he's the one that came and, and made everything, and everything that was made was made by Jesus. And Jesus, in the beginning, was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. So who was the word? Jesus. That's why in the beginning it says, our Lord God. Who is the Lord? Jesus is the Lord. Who is God? Yahweh. Okay, so this is what I, we have to think in our mind. We have to study ourselves to prove as to be ambassadors of God. Okay, but the discipleship and the prophets, we are all prophesying the word of God. We are the prophets. When you are praying for someone and God gives you a little thing up there, say, say this, say it. Even though it don't make sense to us. Say it in a way. Why? Because yeah. just like right now, I started talking about one thing, I'm talking about another. So I got to time out myself and I'll give you back your your uh, <laughs> your scope. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for sharing. Well, thank you. I just wanted to make sure that you understood and everybody understood where where mm -hmm. I was talking about there's no more, uh, no more uh, the word ambassadors, not 
not disciples, there's no more disciples. And the prophesies when we speak, when we preach, when we talk, when we teach. All that the faithful ministry is all in us, in us, each individual is not a name tag. We can only prophesy when God wants us to prophesy. We can only speak. Yeah. We can only speak in tongues when God wants us to speak in tongues, and and we can only preach when God wants us to preach. And we can evangelize when God wants us to evangelize, and we can only teach when God wants us to teach. But a lot of times, God tells us, "Go talk to them about God." Oh no, I can't do that. So people say, I can do all things through God who threatens me. Then God tells them, go talk to those people over there. And I say, oh, no, I can't get up on top. I can't be up there on the pulpit and talk to somebody. So what happened to, you just called, you just called yourself and, and got a liar. Why? Yeah. Because the word of God does not lie. You lied because you said that you could do all things through, through Jesus Christ. That's, and that threatens you, and then you turn around and say you can't get up on the pulpit and talk. Yeah. Okay. So, I think a lot of the problem is people expect to, to feel something before they go and step out. When the anointing no, actually goes on you can, as you step out, as you go. No, because we we do not go by feelings. The feelings That's are right. dead. The feelings are dead to God. The body is dead. That's why you have to carry the cross. Where do you carry it? In here. So you just step out out of your comfort zone. That's the problem. Everybody wants to be going Chinese and then come back and say, okay, I'm a Christian. But then when it comes to, to feeding somebody or talking to somebody or helping somebody out, you don't do it. See? Yeah. So that, that's where you got to step out of the comfort zone because Jesus stepped out of his comfort zone. Why? Because he stepped out of being God himself to become man. So therefore, he came out of his comfort zone, so we have to go out of our comfort zone. Mm -hmm. See? The body, forget the body. The body, the feeling, what I feel, why do we feel? Because that's the carnal part. We are in the spirit. And the spirit is when the spirit is present, the carnal is enmity to God. We cannot be we cannot be in, in the carnal minded and spiritual minded at the same time. You'll either love one or hate the other, or hate one and, and abhor the other. So which one are you gonna do? You gotta stay in the spirit. We gotta read, study ourselves the proof and maintain. Every little step we think, every little step we make, every word we say, we, we got to think about what we said. And if, and, and, and if we noticed that it was not a good thing, then we have to ask God to, 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 to that's why we have to repent every day. Everybody says, well, you only repent one time and that's it. No, you got to repent every day. Every day, because we are in the carnal. As long as we are in the carnal, we are what? Image to God. We have to be in the spirit. And if we're not in the spirit all the time, then we're not connected to the vine all the time. This is why a lot of people uh, uh, don't adjust themselves to Christianity as a way of life, not a religion, because a religion causes division. And a lot of people say, I say, what are you? I say, I'm not, I'm non denominational. He says, non denominational is a religion now. No, it's not. Non denominational means that you are no, no, you're not under a denomination. You only speak to God, just like Moses did, just like Abraham did. What church did they go to? And, but Abraham did know of God because. Uh, Belichick was the one that he paid us to before he left. He went and gave a whole bunch of money to Belichick. That's why he said that Jesus will be in the order of Belichick. But Belichick was a high priest mm -hmm. of God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now Jesus is high priest forever. Yes. 
So you see, this is where 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 we have to drop off and, and, and drop off the, the flesh and the ones that are need and go with 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 the Jesus and pick up your cross in other words your holiness if we, if you don't carry your holiness around your cross of holiness then how can you say you're being holy because we all fail and fall short of the glory of God because we're in the carnal yeah. As long as we're in this carnal, we are images to God. But our spirit is not in the carnal. So when you get in the spirit, then then you're not in the carnal. Now you when you get into the spiritual realm, then you are walking with God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean that's and that's a problem. I don't think there's enough teaching on how teaching the believers how to walk in the spirit. Because we're taught how to walk in the flesh from the time we're born. Yeah. But then we get well, born again and then, then we need to learn all over how, right, how to walk when in the you spirit become born again. Spirit. When you become yeah. born again, you become born again in the spirit, not in the flesh. Yeah. That's what Nicodemus That's right. says. How can I go inside my mom's womb and be born again? He says, No, but in the spirit. Where is the spirit up here? Yeah, yeah that's just it. And so you're a baby all over again in the spirit, but you, you need some right. guidance on how to walk that out. So when God, says, that. when God says, you're a child of God, when we are a children of God, he says, anyone that touches any one of this, it's better for them to put a, a stone around the you know, around around you and jump into the river, then then what you're gonna end up suffering with when my on my on my on my wrath. The reason why is because when you're born again, you are born again Christian, you are born again baby. Now you're a child of God. And it's better for you to do what what it's better for you to 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 uh go is that to kill you, you, you kill, it's a spiritual the death. It's a, people yeah. don't understand the spiritual death because yeah. the spiritual death causes uh, the physical death. When people are depressed and all that, it's because they have spiritual death. And if you're born again Christian and you have spiritual death in you, then you are not yet quite ready to, to be that you say that you're born again yet because you're lacking you're lacking faith by walking in faith you see yeah and, and this is where people don't 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 comprehend even though they go to church all their lives uh, they've been there 10 20 years five years six years and, and they're so proud but yet they're they're ridiculing the 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 non-believers okay and, and at the same time, they're 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 very really cute. The brother, I look at them. They, I used to be like that, but now see that right there. They are they are left. They they are the left to go into the into heaven. Then the they have a last chance to go into heaven. Then 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 the guys that are walking on the street drunk because the guy in the the the, the street drunk can repent of drinking. But you are saying blasphemy, and that right there, if you don't repent and stop doing that, you'll never make it into heaven. If you're looking and laughing at other people because they're drunkards and stinkers and all that, then you are more wrong than they are. Because they have more of a chance of getting into heaven by repenting than you, that you think that you glorifying God when you just glorifying your own ego. Mm -hmm. That's all it is. And ego shifting. When you say, no, look, I'm better than you because I go to this church and that church. And ego system. Right there. <laughs> you just lost your salvation. That's why we, we must re repent every day. Okay, let me get let me let you go back to your and let you want to hit up to nail, you know. 
Yeah, and probably ought to take some more prayer requests or at least check and see if there are some. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, when I write, when I'm praying with you, I just write there. I, I just write there, amen, amen, or in the name of Jesus Christ, right? I just put little things because I'm praying with you. But I just let you know. Because when people ask me to pray, they say, would you pray for me? I do it right there and then. I don't wait until I go home. I do it right there and then. Okay. So thank you, brother. I appreciate mm -hmm. you for letting me come here. And I hope I got you your straight facts. You can read them later if you want. Okay. Yep. Yeah, I took notes. All right. Thank you. <laughs> uh -huh. Bye. God well, bless you. Thanks for coming on. God bless you, brother. Anytime. God bless you. All right. This thing freeze up. Are we still live or what's going on here? Because my screen is frozen. Well, oh, see you later, Omar. <laughs> okay, yeah, I think my screen is unfroze now. So, okay, if there's anybody who's got any prayer requests, go ahead and type those in the chat, and I'll pray for you. Any prayer requests, requests at all, or praise reports, either way. Well, maybe everybody got their prayers answered. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, it is midnight, so they may have went ahead and went to bed. Most people have to work in the morning, so. Oh, yeah, the police report. I ought to add that to the regular list. And I'll add it to the list so I don't forget it tomorrow night. All right. Lord, so Father God, we come to you on behalf of Omar. And Father, we just ask that you would grant him favor in getting this police report sooner rather than later so that the matter can finally be resolved and everybody can move on with their life. 
In Jesus' name. Amen. You're welcome, Omar. And let me know when you finally get the, pre per the police report. <laughs> if I can even say it. Yeah, let me know when you get the police report, and then I'll take it off the list. Welcome to whoever just came in. If you've got a prayer request, go ahead and type it in the chat, and I'll pray for you. Well, I'm believing for it no more. Okay. All right, Sarah, yeah, we're going to pray for you right now. Father God, we come to you on behalf of Sarah. Father, we thank you for the healing blood of Jesus. It's already paid for all the healing she'll ever need. That he paid for that healing with his blood on the cross. Father God, I speak to her teeth and gums and command them to be healed and restored now in the name of Jesus. Willing, redness, degeneration, be gone now in the name of Jesus. Man, the gums to be healthy now. The gums to grow, grow back to the level that they're supposed to be at to hold those teeth securely. And all the decay and damage in those teeth will be restored now in the name of Jesus. We command the acid levels in her digestive system to be in perfect balance. So that there's not too much acid, nor too little acid, but just the right amount. Command her esophagus to be healed now. All the tissue in the esophagus to regenerate and be made whole. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, any more prayer requests? Go ahead and type those in. Hey, blessing, Susan. Welcome. You're welcome, Sarah. Glad I could do that for you. Yeah. Well, if there's any more prayer requests, go ahead and type them in. Anybody have a prayer request? Go ahead and type it in.
Well, did everybody get their prayer request answered? Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> I knew he was getting healed. I just didn't know how long it'd take. And so what does he have to say about getting better? <laughs> Well, I prayed, but it was really Jesus that healed him. I prayed, and Jesus made the miracles happen. So, really, Jesus gets the credit for it. I don't really need to introduce him to the one that got him healed. That's Jesus. It would be a good opportunity to explain to him how the sacrifice Jesus made on that cross, shedding his blood, bought, bought and paid for the healing, made it possible. Well, just pray about it. Proceed as the Lord leads. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's some big difference between Islam and Christianity. Lord. All right, sir, I subscribed to you, so you should be able to follow me back now. I don't know why it's not letting me comment on my own broadcast tonight. Perhaps it's doing all sorts of weird things lately. Welcome to everybody who just came in. If you've got a prayer request, go ahead and type it in the chat, and I'll pray for you. You're welcome. Sleep well.
Do we have any more prayer, prayer requests or praise reports? Right, well, right, more trouble. Yeah, we can pray about that, Susan. Father God, we come to you on behalf of Susan. Father, we just ask that you give her inspiration. Inspire her to do beneficial and fruitful things. That you inspire her to do things that would bring glory to you and your kingdom. That you inspire her to do things that would increase her faith. Do things that would increase her knowledge of you. Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Any more prayer requests? Oh, you're welcome, Susan. Happy to do that for you. Okay, well, I guess if there's no more prayer requests coming in, I think I'm going to go ahead and call it a night. Yeah, I was just thinking that myself. It's about time to go to bed. Already after midnight, and I got to go to work in the morning. So, but if you don't get your prayer request in on the live broadcast, you can always leave it in the comment section on the replay, and I'll still get to see it. So, I that everybody has a restful, regenerative night's sleep, wakes up refreshed in the morning, and I hope to see everybody on the next broadcast.